president reminds us that his near daily ego fluffing jamborees, he is the most successful guy at presidenting in the history of the universe. I will say that never has there been a president, with few exceptions, who's done more things than what we've done. Indeed, sir, you are Kennedy-esque. If we measure presidencies by number of dumbass nuclear standoffs. <laughs> oh, bravo. But if Trump has failed to fully realize his dystopian vision for American regreatening, it's not for want of trying. He just keeps getting cock-blocked. Judges block the Trump administration's suspension of a pollution rule. The California judge's decision to block his executive order that threatened to cut funding to so-called sanctuary cities. A federal judge in Hawaii blocks the new travel ban just hours before it was supposed to go into effect. Lady Justice, such a nasty woman. <laughs> Unfortunately, Trump is moving on her like a bitch. President Trump is now working to put his own stamp on the nation's federal court system. Today, he released a slate of 10 conservative judicial nominees. More will be announced in the months to come, with more than 120 vacancies still in need of being filled. Oh, 15 percent of the federal judiciary. <laughs> all at the same time, huh? OK, all right, here we go. <laughs> After Republican turtles filibustered a record number of judicial nominations by our admittedly black president, there was a rule change that now seems like maybe a bad idea. He's going to be able to get people in thanks to Harry Reid deploying the nuclear option four years ago with a simple 51 to 49 majority. Can everybody just stop saying nuclear today? It is never something good. Trump has picked 37 judges in six months. That's 20 more than Obama. And Obama didn't spend 14 hours a day angrily toilet tweeting while jerking off to Fox and Friends. <laughs> Terrible person, excellent multitasker. Trump also appears to favor younger nominees, much like he does with his mistresses and wives. But unlike a wife, a federal judge is forever. It's a life term, it's generations of impact on American law. And so seeing a president who makes that such a priority is very refreshing. <laughs> yes, refreshing. Like getting hit in the face with a big splash of cold water. Oh my god. Okay, please help me, Ashley. I need it. Okay. <laughs> This is the prize for which the GOP is willing to sacrifice its honor, its principles, and its underwear comfort. A conservative judiciary for decades to come. Clearly the administration, as any does, wants to try to remake the judiciary in its ideological image. Not to mention its literal image. Trump's nominees are overwhelmingly white, like Duplass Brothers Project white. <laughs> if I didn't know those were judicial nominees, I think it was just the next crop of network late night hosts. In some cases, Trump opted to replace an African American nominated by Obama with your standard issue white male, which would be like replacing the leads of Atlanta and Insecure with the leads from Hawaii Five-O, and then never Never canceling the show ever. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. You broke Ashley. So let's meet a couple of our potential life mates. This is 38-year-old Damian Schiff. He strongly disagreed with the Supreme Court's decision in Lawrence v. Texas, which ended punishment for sodomy, and isn't too keen on schools saying it's okay to be gay. The title of the post is teaching gayness in public schools. Mr. Schiff, how did that school's plan, quote, teach gayness? By telling LGBT kids that they're good enough, they're smart enough, and doggone it, people like them? God, we can't have that! <laughs> Schiff comes to us from the Pacific Legal Foundation, a pro-corporate lobbying group whose website touts their work trying to get the golden parakeet taken off the endangered species list. Presumably because it is the gayest parakeet. <laughs> Schiff combines an old man's worldview with a young man's need to blurt it all over the internet. Did you call Justice Kennedy a judicial prostitute? I, I'm sorry, I used that phrasing. What is it about your generation that y'all think you have to write this stuff down? <laughs> you understand it's a permanent record. Oh, 
permanent record. Somebody's getting detention. Okay, I'm sorry. Damien Schiff is too young to get that joke. He was in kindergarten when Breakfast Club came out. He'll be there forever. Please kill me. Here's another of the best and the whitest, John Bush, who compared Roe v. Wade to Dred Scott and whose wife runs a website called Elephants in the Bluegrass, which is not a porn site for Appalachian bestiality buffs. Oh, I wish. It's a far-right blog where Bush shared his thoughts on President Obama's Kenyan heritage. One of those posts quotes uh, freely from an article on World News Daily. A website known for peddling conspiracy theories, fake news, and white nationalism. How did you decide which sources were credible? I was, um, as, a, as a blogger, I was finding things that were in the news that were of note. Wow. You couldn't have met with yourself before the hearing to get your story straight? <laughs> What say you, Senator Cranky Pants, from the great state of Get Off My Lawn? Mr. Bush, I've read your blogs. I'm not impressed. <laughs> That's all we got, Mr. Chairman. Except your vote. You could cast it against the World Net Daily Birther conspiracy guy. Believe it or not, confirming judges with a bigoted history used to be something both parties agreed was bad. But that was in the 1980s before bipartisanship was canceled, along with NBC's Manimal, which totally had potential, goddammit. In 86, two Republicans on the Judiciary Committee voted to block the racist nominee of a better and more popular president than Trump, to which I say, well done, and to which our current Senate says, psych. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs>